Hey gang, we're going to do a little old school video today. Uh, it's warmed up quite a bit here, like unseasonably warm, like weird, you know what I mean, boy? It's going to get up to like 60 or 70 today here in southern Michigan in February. And I've really only seen that one time in my entire life. It was actually, it's like six or seven years ago, we had a big time warm up. And I've actually learned in a... In the very few times, <laughs> the very few times that that goofy stuff has happened, it's actually, it messes the fish up. It like really confuses them or vice versa. It confuses me. I've been to a, a, a lake already this morning and I got my rear end handed to me. I can tell you everything. They're not biting on the lake I was just at. Like all of that, everything in there. Um, but I'm gonna kinda wait until it warms up today and go at them with a tube just because we get a lot of questions on cracking a tube. That's what we're going to do. See you in a minute. First thing I'm hunting whenever I'm cracking the tube, and I say this in pretty much every single one of my videos, especially in the spring. First thing I'm hunting, all the bluegills I can find. And where we're at right here, I literally saw like 20 bluegill fishermen in here about a month ago, which tells me there's a, what the wolf wants to kill is in this area. And it looks like when, whenever I'm cracking a tube, it looks like I'm moving that bait a lot. I'm not, I'm just bouncing that slack and making it scoot like a crawdad and when I grab grass I don't rip it out I just sit there and pop it like that till it breaks free and that's when they'll load up on it the other thing besides bluegill that I focus on this time of year is wherever wind is pushing into um, wherever I see that wind has consistently a day or two in a row is pushing into generally that's where I'm going to stare at but we, it's been so calm the last couple days calm and warm in February is actually it's not the best thing on planet earth it's not the best thing on planet earth <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, bud. Little fella. Huh? Made a right call. We're going to find a deal in here, a sand spot. Generally, what I'm looking for is sand spots surrounded by coontail. Like I see one right there. There's also a sunken ice house right out here that went down many years ago. And around it, it grew grass. When we find that, we'll catch a few more. But when I'm cracking a tube, it looks like right there that I'm moving that tube a lot. I'm absolutely, positively not. That tube's not moving that far on each pump. Like I see two or three really good sand spots. All sand spot fish. And I use straight floral carbon. Little guys, but we'll catch a big in here. Look at old Mr. Red Lips. <laughs> yeah, bud. Um, I'm using a three and a half inch coffee tube with a little quarter ounce head. But I never, 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 never use braid 
I never use braid to a fluorocarbon leader on the tube because it actually makes the tube too responsive. It, when you pop that slack, a tube will go like that with braid and you, you don't want it to. You want a duller, that makes sense, you want a duller action from that tube in this cold of water. Here's how easy this whole thing is. If you're an old school tube fisherman, you're laughing at me right now saying, dude, I know what a tube is. I know how to rig it. If you're not, this is for you. Three and a half inch green pumpkin coffee tube. Quarter ounce, quarter ounce jig head. And like I said, to me, the main key in cracking a tube is no braid, no braid. I love braid, I use a lot of braid, but I use it on other things, I don't use it on this. Because again, it makes that, it makes the, uh, that tube too responsive. It makes it move too much. It makes it move too much when you're snapping it and cracking it, okay? Six to eight pound fluorocarbon, but I'm adamant that you use a long rod to do this so you can reach out and really touch somebody when like that when you get bit way out there by a big one you want to move him and be able to not move him but you want to move some line and a six and a half foot rod just doesn't move a lot of line yeah but Go punish him. That's it. That's the whole setup. But it's weird. Yesterday, at the end of the day, you could roll footage right now. I was looking at him. Not on this lake. But I was looking at them shallow, coming up cruising, big ones. And that's a, that's a typical behavior for springtime. But when I, when I saw that, how big some of the bass were that were moving thin yesterday, near the end of the day, I was like, wow, they're here. I mean, they're ready to, they're ready to jam. That's another good one. Look here. God. Dang, man. Look, look, look. I'm talking about Dad. Oh, he had a follower with him. Look at that. Are you kidding me, bud? I mean, an old haunch. Nice one. To me, the rod, slouchy slouch rod, to me, the rod is probably the most important thing when you're doing this. I use an 872. It's actually a rod that I worked with Loomis on quite a bit. It's got a real soft tip. So you can throw it a mile. Plus that soft tip kind of absorbs the shock when you hit one. But past like the third or fourth guide, it's actually got a lot of backbone. But that longer rod, it's seven foot three, seven foot three inches. That longer rod lets you have a lot of leverage on them if you hook a big one, especially if you hook one way out there. It's starting to get blotchy. That's the main thing I hunt wherever it gets blotchy. Dark, light, light, dark, stuff like that. That's when you're in it. Don't be scared.
maybe two foot of water. Not a slouch, but it's a keeper. Look at that. Two foot of water, February in Michigan. Wow. That's a nice one. Uh, uh. I guess there's some decent ones up there that shallow. Nice chubs. Now check it out, gang. Three and a half inch coffee tube. Nothing fancy. Just a running back. Quarter ounce head. Then I mean, it is time to light them up. Like that one right there. That one right there, my bait grabbed a piece of grass and I could feel it just hanging on the grass. And then all of a sudden he just come up and and like I said, you don't you don't feel the usual tung tung the way you the way I'm fishing this. You, it, it, your your bait just does something different, and then your rod starts to load up. expect to get bit on that throw. And that's like that deep. It's nice little chubs. Not big ones. Somebody from Northern Alabama right now is watching going, you're a dork. And I would totally agree with you. so weird. You can go like 200, 300 yards right now and never get a bite. And then when you find one, you'll get bit on every throw. you to hang with me. I'm going to catch a big one doing this today, like a really big one, like a five or a six pounder. They're acting correct.
for if it was April. right off the bat after I ripped it off that piece of grass. sound you're hearing on that rod is those recoil guides. That's a good one. That is a good one. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, bud. That's the dead gum ram slouch of the day. That's Darva Conger right there. Hoo, 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 hoo. That is so awesome. Look how pristine that bass is. Two foot of water. February. See ya. All right, gang, real quick. Um, I hope you enjoyed my one of my first little on my own GoPro videos. Um, do the do what the kids do, do the liking and the sharing and that whole thing. But uh, if you don't like it, <laughs> don't like it and don't share it. <laughs> um, I'm being dead serious. Uh, if you can, post a couple techniques that you want to see a couple videos on, and I'll go out in the next month or two and try to do a few more of these. I figure if I'm going to play hooky, I might as well do a couple, not a few videos of them. If you know what I mean, boy. That's the last one of the day. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's like, you ready? Ta-da!